Presented by Church Tech U, it's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, how to use the new network link function in ProPresenter 7.8. Hi and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've been waiting for this feature, if when ProPresenter 7 came out and Master Control Module wasn't there, and now you're really excited, go ahead and subscribe, clip, click on the little bell icon, or just give me a thumbs up. And uh, that's uh, how you can let me know that that's what you've been waiting for. So, this is, as I've just said, this is a feature that people have been clamoring for. Now, it turns out that a lot of them could have done basically the same thing on one more powerful computer. But there are a couple of things that you can't do as well on a more powerful computer as you can on two computers. So let me head over to the computer and we'll talk just about that. So we're in ProPresenter 7.8 here, and that's very important uh, for this because it won't work on ProPresenter 7.7.1 and new earlier. So first thing we need to do is go into the ProPresenter and then Preferences and then Network. So once we've done that, make sure you click Enable Link, and then we need to create a group. So the first thing we're going to do is type in the IP address of the other computer. Now, here, let me cancel this and show you that the IP address is listed right here. So you could go over to the other ProPresenter computer and just look at what's listed there and type in that same port number. So let's do just that. I happen to know that the other computer, which is this one right here on the desk, is uh, 192.168.86, I almost said 68.30, and the port number is 65178, so 65178. Okay, and then let's hit continue. Okay, there it is. I've already given it a name, but if you hadn't, then you would have to give it a name. I called the group my 13-inch, because this is my 13-inch MacBook Pro that uh, we have there. And then this should uh, auto-connect. So. so for whatever reason, the LED is saying that it's not connected. But if we go over here, notice here, let me click on this here. And then I'm going to go over to this computer. And you can see I had the space bar on. So as I hit the space bar here, or the number keys here, notice this is not connected to anything. That's because I'm doing this over Wi-Fi. But I have control from this computer over to that computer. But this isn't a master-slave relationship like it was in the previous version of this function they are equals. So I can control it from this computer, from the one you're looking at this on. Uh, and actually, let me go back. So, here, let me take it full screen so that it's a little more obvious and oh 
I've just realized that the problem was that I was on a totally different presentation. So let's go to the correct presentation. And we should be good to go there. Okay, now, let me put that up full screen. And now you'll notice here, let me move my trackpad down. You'll notice that while this is not connected to anything, it's even running off of battery, I can hit the space bar here and it changes in both places. So that is pretty cool that I now have the ability to control it from either computer, from the, the one that maybe I want, oops, just hit the space bar over here. Maybe I wanna control it from this computer sometimes, and maybe I wanna control it from that computer sometimes. So let's talk about uh, some use cases for this and why this matters. Because for a lot of churches, you don't need this whatsoever. But for example, my church, we've got one machine that runs the announcement loop and then another one that does lyrics and stuff for uh, sermon notes, etc. Right now, if the ProPresenter operator needs to uh, change slides on one computer or the other, they're right next to each other, but they just need to go from one keyboard and mouse to the other keyboard and mouse. But with 7, uh, 8, they won't need to do that. So that's one advantage. Another advantage is that um, let's say that you have a computer on the network connected to a stage TV like this. And they're otherwise, they're, they're on the network, but you didn't want to send the video over the network. You just want to control it. Maybe the pastor wants to sometimes advance it, and you want to sometimes advance it as the pro presenter operator because, you know, maybe sometimes the pastor forgets to advance it. It happens. So now you can control it from both situations. You'd have to make sure that you know not to override one or the other, but you could do it that way. You could even send NDI over the network, maybe live video feed from your um, sanctuary, over the network to another pro presenter instance and have the message in that other pro presenter instance, let's say in a video overflow room. So you could have um, the one pro presenter instance does most of the main controlling and then uh, in another situation it doesn't. So you've got a lot of flexibility there with the ability to run two instances of pro presenter and have them controlled by either machine. So very fun stuff. I will tell you one thing that you should know is every uh, pro presenter instance that's actually putting out to a screen needs to be registered. So don't think, oh, this is perfect. I've got one seat and I'm gonna show that on 12 different computers. No, that doesn't work. But if you had the site license, you could have each of those 12 computers uh, set up and then output to 12 different places with different formatting, etc. And um, there are even some other things that this controls that the master control module did not control in the old days because, quite frankly, they didn't exist in ProPresenter 6. So, very exciting. Let me tell you about what I've heard um, is the new and upcoming features that they haven't actually released quite yet. Uh, one is network discoverability. So right now you have to type in the IP address. It will 
they're working on having it where you have a list and you just click on the appropriate one and it works. That'll be great. One thing that's really exciting is they're working on having it to where if you have videos playing in two places, they are synced up to the frame of video. You know, 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. I'm rounding. But so you could have it playing exactly frame accurate, and they're working on that too. So that's something... I don't know when it'll be released, maybe with the actual release version, or maybe um, it will be a future version, but those are a couple of things that they've said in their announcements that um, will be available. So this is a very exciting feature, and it's making the list of things that people said, well, I can't upgrade from ProPresenter 6 because it's making that list very, very, very short. Uh, there might be things that I don't know of, but very short list now. So just more exciting stuff. Um, if you like this content, you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, so head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Put in your name and email address there, and you can get my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from trinitydigitalmedia.com and churchtechu.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.